I'm going to do respectfully disagree with you guys. You I don't think anybody world, knows what they use. I don't think the world has paid any attention at all because I see them still using this because they've defaulted now back to their old habits and they're using bleach and they're using everything else. That, and they don't understand anything that we were trying to teach them back in the past two, three years. Hello, everyone. This is Dave Thompson. And gosh, you're back to another episode of Talking Clean in a Dirty World. We peruse all of our social media out there, gentlemen, and find things to, that's interesting, things that the cleaning industry is talking about. And I thought it was interesting as I was looking at it on our LinkedIn profile of a discussion uh, about chemistry. And I know that, you know, in the cleaning business and all of our world over the last uh, couple of years, what to clean with and I thought it was interesting as I bring this up, so pardon me just a minute. Let me click the right things here, folks. Get to the right thing. Maybe you can see this here. You know, this is a discussion about what is citric acid. Um, do most people really know what they're cleaning with, gentlemen? Mm, I don't think in, in, uh, in depth, in detail, uh, they don't. I, they got a maybe a general concept of what products are involved in what they're using, but I don't think they really know per se. Dave. Yeah, whenever you say citric acid, do people actually hear the citric or the acid part? I think it's citric. <laughs> they're thinking okay. you're cleaning with orange juice. <laughs> I, yeah, absolutely. So is, is orange juice the cleaner we're cleaning with today? <laughs> no. Yeah, I think I think the. Uh, um, the world has a lot more understanding because this article talks about it being a disinfectant. Uh, the world has a lot more understanding of what they were using as and utilizing as disinfectants uh, since uh, 2020 um, comparative. Um, I know just at GEM, we, we brought in tons of different um, disinfectants other than just your basic right. ammonium chloride type disinfectant during that time period. Um, and this is just another another version of from what it's talking about there. I'm going to respectfully disagree with you guys. You I don't think, think anybody world, knows what they use. I don't think the world has paid any attention at all because I see them still using this because they've defaulted now back to their old habits and they're using bleach and they're using everything else. That, and they don't understand anything that we were trying to teach them back in the past two, three years. <clears throat> they, I don't think they ever have. <laughs> I'm not optimistic that they ever will. That's what keeps us in business uh, because we just keep repeating ourselves over and over. And most folks never liked chemistry in high school and chemistry is what we do here. And, and when we try to explain things in chemical terms and chemi chemistry terms, they glaze over and their mind goes shut and they think about what they're going to eat for lunch. I really think the public doesn't pay attention. I, I watch it in, in action throughout public facilities and you know in the publics or in the, the restaurants or wherever I'm at. And I don't see I don't see the knowledge that we think they were learning. Either it's not being passed down to the employees, which could be the main problem, or it's not seen as relevant now because COVID's not such a big worry. So well, so is it, let, they're looking let, at let, speed. Let, they're looking at uh, ease of use. Um, right. If you can get speed and ease of use and speak and speak in that. I mean, yeah. it's less about chemistry and more about speed, ease of use, and then safety, right, as a third version. And um, that's where, like, I'm a big fan of H-Docs because that has that speed and ease of use mm -hmm. and the safety factor. Um, the one that we – that was surprising because it's so expensive was the hypochlorous, whatever they call that, hypochlorous. And um, and we sold that through Purox. And, um, again, very fast – very mm -hmm. safe. Um, and so, so it, uh, is a it, it had a one minute kill. Yeah. yeah or less. That's, and I, uh, and I think that's the focus, right? So most of the customers are looking for speed and ease of use yeah. to do that's that. What, that's what we use, Bobby, exclusively is H docs. That's, that's all I, all we use. And I agree with you. I love it. I mean, anything that's hydrogen peroxide based anyway, I think is, is, is really good. And I think a lot of people can relate to the high hydrogen peroxide base. It's not so thing because, you know, 
they've been using it for toothaches and all kinds of stuff this infects for a long time so it's not so freaked out for them you know to, yeah. when you're when you're going back to what don was saying when you're trying to convince or people are trying to realize what it is they're cleaning with <clears throat> so so don i want to ask a question though isn't this where we need to break apart what the public uses and what we use commercially um so I, I hear your argument about what the public sees, but I go back to what Bobby said and what Javier saying here. Commercially, do we get the fact that we need to use these less toxic products? There are options that we can use instead of those, and citric acid's been in using cleaning in pharmaceuticals for decades. Are you asking me? I think I did say Don. Yes, but your question went sideways. Um, to answer one of those questions, I don't. I think I think we can we conflate commercial versus public all the time, and there's a big difference there. Public yes. is people who hire people to do things, uh, and cleaning is one of the necessities of their job. It's not their job. In commercial cleaning, is your job. It's that's your intention. You're hired to do that. That's all you're going to do in that job is do some type of cleaning. So those two things get kind of put together in a scenario, and I don't think those two fit in our world because we, we talk on the commercial side intensely about chemicals, how they're used, which one's better and why, and et cetera, et cetera. But on the public side, we give them the peripheral. Um, you know, the, the big companies come in, they throw a thing on the wall, a dispenser of some type, and they go, here, this says all-purpose, this says class, this says disinfectant, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And that's the end of their training other than a wall chart. And so, and turnover is so high that they don't have a time to go in and train those folks. So then you get a default, and I'm talking public side. On the default side, you get folks that come in, they're trained to go, yeah, grab a glass cleaner and go clean glass. And then they end up, because they got it in their hand, they clean everything with it. And on, on and on and on it goes. That, that type of scenario is the public side. On the commercial side, hobbyist side, you guys spend a lot of time training your folks on how to do a specific task. Exactly. And that is important because you're going in and doing a commercial uh, cleaning versus just peripherally getting something clean. You're going in to do a deep clean usually, and you're, you're responsible for it. You're held responsible. You're paid for it. That's a whole different mindset. So I think that's where our disconnect always comes. We always talk about the public doing this. Well, first of all, they're publicly trained because they saw Clorox on the, on the bleach on the TV set now for eons, and they come to work for Javier. And now he's got to retrain their mind to this is how we do this. That's what I see. I see it in all scenarios, churches, schools, you name it. Okay, uh, Javier, he hit you a lot there. So I, I guess I you got to respond, baby, take right? It. Take it and run with it. Well, the question, but, but honestly, Don is right. It, it's a challenge. It's a continuous challenge. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with anything he said. I, I agree with 100%. We have that campaign. And we've always had that campaign since we started, and we have to continuously be on top of everyone to train them properly. Because, like for example, that that what that um now or that example that Don just said about running around with one window cleaner bottle, and because of convenience, just running around and spraying the same stuff over everything. I mean, that is just that is like one of the worst habits. And then, and I've seen it done already many times for people working with us, and it's a continuous correction. It's like you're not going to use glass cleaner for, you know, disinfecting. You're not going to use glass cleaner to clean a toilet. I mean, come on. But, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a challenge, but it's something that you have to continuously keep working on. There's no doubt about it. You can't let it go. And then when you do let it go, that's when you get sloppy. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I was trying to – I wanted to share something. Not to slow the show down here, but – You already did. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I wanted to – I wanted to share a wall chart from from HDocs. Oh, go ahead and just click the uh, the 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 uh, setting down there, share, and I'll uh, throw it up here. But in the meantime, while Bobby's getting that up, gentlemen, um, you know, I think the interesting thing here is that article was talking about the fact of safe chemistry, and citric acid is a weak acid that is safe, and we've been using it for a long time. And I think it goes back to what Don and Javier are saying here. Uh, we need to, in the commercial in the, in the arena anyway, and also in public, we should be looking for safer 
options. Do we think that we figured this out over the last couple of years, Javier? I mean, are the people coming to you, do they get it? Or, and do your clients that you're marketing to get it? Or is it still that hard battle? It's still a difficult battle. I think it's gotten better. And especially after COVID, um, there were, because I think the eyes were open for a lot of people, not, a, not, not, not I wouldn't say a huge majority, but options were given or shown through either on the CDC website or through other avenues of information to where people see that there was some kind of an alternative to using regular Clorox or using ammonium chloride, like Bobby said, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But I, it's still a battle, though. It's still hard because the average person is still not – or if they know, like, for example, we're talking about citric acid. If they know that citric acid is around, they don't know the effectiveness of citric acid being able to clean something or disinfect something. So, you know, it's drawing that parameter together to say, hey, look, there's citric acid, there's hydrogen peroxide, there is, um, you know, a lot of different other uh, things out there that will, uh, you know, achieve the same goal, but it, it's getting them to always remember it or if not necessarily remember, even inform them to begin with, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so it's still challenging to answer your question. Yeah. Bobby, I think you have this that you wanted to share. Yeah, I just wanted to show that because that that's what you guys were talking about was the the struggle, right, of the public or the training of what the people utilize. And that's just pointing out why I'm a big fan of HDocs because it's one product diluted two different ways, very simple training um, because you basically say, hey, if it's red, spray the red on the red and green on the green. So um, you can do almost a color training on that. And and the safety part of it and the fast kill time. So I just wanted to tie it together, know, let people see what's out there with that. They have these for every room. You can make them customized to the your specific facilities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the gentlemen, one of the things is, is I was teaching a class last week on carpet care. Uh, we were at Raymond James Stadium over in Tampa. And, you know, it was very interesting to me how most people are still dealing with all kinds of chemicals. I mean, a whole list of chemistry still. And when you simplify it, like Bobby's saying with this, and Javier, you've found this in your in your education, your skills training. It's just like, really, I can do that? Uh, I think citric acid can break down a whole lot of things that people don't realize. We don't need those high-powered, high-pH chemicals any longer. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And for, I mean, for, for a couple of major reasons, I mean, not only, you know, from the aspect of, of it, we can, you know, achieve the same thing with products like HDOCs and all that, but it's also too, from a financial standpoint, if you look at, if you really consider how much these companies are spending on all these extra chemicals that are not needed, I mean, I know it's good because the chemical industry has to be supported. You know, of course, there's always going to be a need for it, but it, it's it's not so much the money also. It's just that you can do more with one particular product. It's, it's just the way I feel. I want to let you know that we do have a podcast channel. Uh, it is Beyond Clean with Ace, where the cleaning industry talks. You might have heard me talk about Mickey Anderson. She is a regular on the show now. So if you want some of these tips about what I was just talking about, what we talked about today about marketing, what you're doing in 23, she's been on the show with us uh, quite a bit in uh, 22. I've been listening. We're trying to follow some of that advice. This is why you see Cleaning with the Academy uh, coming out for this year. Um, we'd, we would hope that you'd come over here and join us here. Also want to thank Jim Supply, our sponsor, where... They have been improving lives with cleaning supplies since 1930. Um, as Bobby mentioned, the festivals start in February the 23rd. We'll be doing it every two weeks until we get all four cities covered. Gentlemen, any uh, parting words before we close the show out for today? Cleaningfestival.com. <laughs> Looking Victor. forward to attending. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a great 2023. How about that? <laughs> Javier, where can people find you and get in touch with you? Well, you can go uh, a couple different ways. You can go on our website, which is moderncleaningsolutions.com. Uh, there's a link there. Then um, also to uh, where Facebook, Instagram, 
Uh, and then, of course, uh, on our website, there's a link to the office, to our office number. Then, of course, it's call forwarded to my personal number and to my wife's number as well. So there's like four different ways that you can get a hold of us. But the be best way is uh, go green at moderncleaningsolutions.com. That's also our email. Uh, what What is the service area that you cover over there, Javier? We do all of Tampa Bay. So we will primarily in Hillsborough County, but we will do Pinellas County and Pasco County. So we're, so we're tri-county area. <laughs> <clears throat> our surrounding counties. <clears throat> okay, Don Tracy. Yes. You can find me at Gem Supply. I'm on all the websites. Where, you where, where are you predominantly at most of the time? Anywhere I want to be. I cover all of Florida pretty much. So I go where I'm needed, which is about two places. <laughs> you can reach me at 407-947-6196 or dtracy at gemsupply.net. I'll be there for you. And Bobby? Cleaningfestival.com. Right there. <laughs> Pigs are us. <laughs> you go to cleaningfestival.com, uh, you will find me. And then yep. I will find you. Gentlemen, thank you for your time and bring on the show uh, here to start with. Hopefully it'll be a good year for all of us in a lot of different ways. Folks, please like and share uh, this uh, YouTube video. Uh, we'll be actually throwing it out on the podcast channel. So that's what it, all information is all about. Like it, share it, subscribe, and just remember, make sure that your world is clean and healthy. Till next time.